Are we rolling? Yep. Are we rolling? <laughs> yep. We're rolling, boys and girls. Okay. This is Mr. Hayes. I'm here this morning with my little friend Panda, the puppet. See Panda? He's my friend. And uh, I'm going to show you kind of a hands-on demonstration of how we develop paper in the dark room. Now we're out here in the classroom and obviously the regular lights are on. When you do this later, you'll be in the dark room under safe light conditions. It'll look a little different. You'll notice that trays out here have some color to them. They do in the dark room too, but under the safe light, those colors are going to look a lot different because different colors respond differently to that red light. So I want to do this kind of step by step, dry, meaning there's not actual liquids in here, so that you can see the sequence and write it down and understand. Pretty soon this will all be second nature to you, but this is how we're going to start. So the first step, the first step is you're going to have a piece of photo paper. You're going to put that photo paper under a light source. You're going to put stuff on the photo paper. We're going to turn on the light source for a prescribed period of time. That'll be your exposure time. What it is right now, I don't know. That don't matter. What matters is that we have the correct one, and that depends upon the intensity of the light, the time the light is striking your paper, how much stuff is on there. Even your paper makes a difference. So we'll figure that out. So your paper has been exposed to light. When you're looking at it, if you remember from yesterday, you won't see anything. It won't look yet like a shadow green. It's just going to look white. But the image is there. The chemical reaction between light and the photo paper has happened. We call those latent images. It's there, but until we do another process or do something to it, we're not going to see it. So the first step is... You've got your print. Don't go walking around. Don't come walking in here with and say, Hey, Ms. Reyes, I made my first print! Because you'll ruin it. Okay, you got to keep it under the safe light. So that brings us to our first chemical here. The first chemical bath you're going to put your photo paper into is called developer. Get that? We develop our prints. The first step, developer. Clever, huh? Okay. So take your print... Drop it into the developer, poof, and then you're going to notice in the dark room there are sets of tongs in there. And as soon as you drop it in there, pick up one of these tongs and kind of sploosh it down under the developer. Okay, make sure it gets thoroughly coated with the developer. Don't use your fingers. Okay, don't use somebody else's fingers. Use the tongs because you don't want to get this junk on you. Some people like to put their print in there first, like with the emulsion side face down first. That's not a bad idea, but then flip it over right away. Flip it over, because you're going to see magic. The first time you make a print in there, you're going to see magic. What is going to happen is your print, <clears throat> progressively, in about one to two minutes, it only needs to be in here about one to two minutes, you're going to see those areas that were exposed to light start turning black. You'll, you'll, you'll see it take place like, ooh, and it's totally cool. So you watch it. You watch it. Pretty soon, your image is going to appear. And it is it's like magic. I'm not kidding. And what you're looking for, it, it, it's hard to keep track of this at first, but what you're looking for are really nice, dark, rich areas of black. And it's kind of hard to judge that right away, but you want this to get nice and black. So don't sell yourself short as a developer. It's, it, you, know, you can overdevelop things, but it's real easy to underdevelop. So developer, about one to two minutes. Now, the sad part about that process is, is if you left it in there, it would just keep right on developing. So we need to stop it. We need to stop that process quickly. So what you will be doing is picking your print up with tongs and going to the next chemical bath, dropping it in and making sure it gets coated again. You can, you know, kind of agitate it around a little bit. The next bath is called stop bath. See where I'm going with all this? We did developer, 
we got to stop it, so we put it in the stop bath. Stop bath, some of you are going to be in there thinking and notice that that smells like salad dressing. Hmm. Well, that's because it almost is. Stop bath is just a little more sophisticated variation of acetic acid, which is vinegar. Sometimes when we're really short on money, I go buy vinegar, and we use that for our stop bath. It works. So stop bath for about a minute. Just about a minute. It's sticky. Pick it up, and I didn't mention in the first one, but after you pick it up, <coughs> the same thing with the developer. Give it a chance to kind of drip dry a little bit. Drip dry, because you really don't want to, if you don't have to, you don't want to intermix these chemicals. Drip dry. And the next one is called Fixer. What would happen is right now you would look like you have a print and everything's done. If you walked out of here for about two or three minutes it would look okay. But it's impermanent and you need to chemically fix all that chemical reaction into place. Otherwise your print is going to turn purple and disappear and look all nasty. So the Fixer does that. So we put it into the Fixer for about five to ten minutes Agitate it around again. La, 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 la. You know? And during that five to ten minutes, you better not get your cell phone out. Right? Just keep an eye on it and don't tell your, your buddy in there, hey, will you watch it? No. You need to be, this is what I was talking about. Don't have somebody else do your process. You need to be in there doing this. So, fixer, five to ten minutes. At this point, your print's getting pretty close to done. I mentioned on the first or second day that I'm trying to save water. I'm honestly trying to save water in here. I've changed a lot of things to be much more conserving of our water use. The next one is right along that line. It's called Hypo Wash. Hypo Wash is a chemical bath <coughs> designed to get the fixer off primarily, get the stop bath off, and make sure there's no residue of developer. Make sure all these other chemicals going to help rinse them all off. So, put it in the hypo wash. Sploosh. Same, same. Agitate it around. Five minutes or so is good. Take it out of the hypo wash and into the last chemical bath, which is water. Water. It's a big tray in there. That's why I used a bigger tray here. It's a big tray in there. It's just water and... <coughs> We used to do like three different water baths. I used to have the water running all the time. You know, this is this is the one where water conservation is a problem because you're supposed to rinse your print under running water for like a long time to get all the chemicals off. Otherwise, the chemicals discolor your photograph. So, what I think I'm going to do this this year, starting very soon, is I'm going to buy like a little aquarium pump and put it inside of here and have it just continuously recirculate that water around. That way I won't have to have the faucet running, and I think that'll work. So, 10 minutes has gone by. Take it out of the water, give it a little drip dry, and then in the dark room, there's a little, at the end of the sinks down here, there's another little sink and a clear piece of plastic. What you're gonna do is set it on that plastic, and with a squeegee, or even your hand, it doesn't really matter, just kind of dry off that excess water. Bring it in here and we dry it in the classroom. Then you're done. It's that easy. So, um, a few little hot tips. Always use your tongs. Always. Sticking your fingers in there. When I made all those chemicals up yesterday, I got enough on me. Oh, man, they smell. Always use the tongs. Don't leave the tongs just laying around. When you're finished with tongs, there's a little container to put them into. If you happen to splash one of these chemicals on you accidentally, inside the big, big sink running around all of the chemicals is a water bath. So you could you know, quickly uh, you know, stick your finger in there and get whatever it is you got on you. What I do is a second nature, considering that's water floating around in there. When I pick up a pair of tongs, I have no idea where they've been. I don't know who used them. Maybe they were like, you know, I don't know. So I make sure I rinse them off in that water first. 
I rinse them off first, then I go into the developer. Before I go into the stop path, I rinse them off again and go into the stop path. I'm always rinsing them off. Ding, rinse, rinse, rinse. That way I make sure you know, the tongs are clean and it keeps my print clean. It's a good idea. Second thing I want to make sure you all know. <coughs> Oftentimes, a student will get down to like about the fixer or the hypo wash and they'll go, my print's not like, it's not like, you know, dark enough. Which I really don't understand that as a descriptor. Because I look at things as like contrast and it wasn't unexposed enough. Dark enough doesn't, I don't <coughs> use that. And so they think, because it's not dark enough, that they go back to the developer and they can develop it longer. Bad idea. Don't ever do that. This is a one-way, one-way process. Start with developer, stop bath, fixer, hypo, water. That's it. Do not ever go backwards. And this is one of those moments where like somebody's going like, I heard you can go backwards. No, because if you go backwards, each chemical progressively pollutes and corrupts something else. You know, the stop bath is made to put this, to stop this. So if stop bath gets into the developer, you know, that's, that's going to ruin the developer. So only one way. If your print is not dark enough, that means probably you either didn't develop it long enough or you need a longer exposure time. So we'll adjust a different variable. Don't go backwards. Photography is all about finding the right variable for you to control and adjust until you get the desired output that you want. Not about going backwards. Um, don't splash these things. One year I was such a dope, I thought it'd be fun to have little rubber duckies floating around in there. So I had little rubber ducks floating around and, the, and it was like really cute and stuff till I caught one kid like picking them up and throwing them into the sink and they were ugh, not good. Okay, so take, you know, be serious about all this stuff. The fixer is it's this blend of acids. If you get it in your eyes, in your nose, in your mouth, if I have a paper cut, just a simple little cut, and I get fixer on it, it hurts. It really, really, really hurts. So, you know, be safe while you're operating all these things. Try to keep them off your clothing. Um, and if it doesn't work right the first time for you, it's okay. It's okay. Nobody in here has done this. It's a new thing, and it takes a little bit of experience for you to, like, get it all under control. So, um, that's how we develop paper. Once you do this, you know how to do this for the next project, and the next project, and the next project, because this stays pretty consistent throughout your whole time here in Photography one. So with that in mind, you guys are so quiet and polite, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Big shout out to our cameraman here. And with that,